Ever since Alex Jones's fiery historical defence of the Second Amendment during his appearance on CNN's Piers Morgan Tonight last month, leftist gun control advocates and websites such as the Huffington Post, Daily Kos, Policy Mike, and of course Salon.com have attempted to ludicrously rewrite history by claiming that Hitler did not pursue gun control legislation and was actually an advocate for the civilian ownership of firearms. And the way they do this is basically via a process of insane mental gymnastics. First of all, yes, it's accepted that Hitler took already existing laws from the Weimar Republic and made them more draconian to target primarily his political adversaries. And this Salon.com article admits that the law did prohibit Jews and other persecuted classes from owning guns. That, of course, is a reference to the 1938 Nazi Gun Control Act, which prohibited Jews from, quote, acquiring, possessing and carrying firearms and ammunition, as well as truncheons or stabbing weapons. So they admit that the Jews were disarmed before they were slaughtered and interned in prison camps en masse. Yet they make the ridiculous argument that even if the Jews had all have been armed before Kristallnacht and their total persecution by the Nazi regime, by the Gestapo, by the brown shirts, by the mobs that were not stopped by the police as they invaded Jewish homes to beat and drag out of their own homes the Jewish people in Nazi Germany. They still argue, these gun control advocates, that the Jews, even if they had been completely armed, would not have been able to resist. Which is, of course, complete nonsense. As Stephen P. Halbrook documents in his excellent book, Target Switzerland, one of the primary reasons why Hitler did not invade Switzerland was because the population had almost universal ownership of firearms. And indeed, every military-age male, just as it is almost universally today in Switzerland, had a rifle in the home. That was one of the primary reasons why Hitler did not invade Switzerland. Does that mean that the Jews could have resisted and overturned the Nazi war machine, the domestic terror? Well, no. But does it mean that at least some of them could have fought back, escaped, and survived? Well, yes, of course it does. You only have to look back at the historical titan, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, and his famous quote, you know, how we burned in the camps later thinking, what if during the mass arrests we'd have basically fought back with whatever weapons were available? Of course, all their weapons had been confiscated by the communist government, which we'll get to in a minute. But could the Jews have been more successful in their resistance had they had access to an adequate arsenal of firearms? Well, to answer that question, you only have to look at what Joseph Goebbels wrote after the unsuccessful Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. Quote, This just shows what you can expect from Jews if they lay hands on weapons. Unfortunately, most of them weren't able to do so because of the 1938 law, which specifically banned them from doing so. And as the historian William Sheridan Allen points out in his study, the Nazis also conducted house-to-house -house searches of, quote, subversives immediately after they seized power to confiscate firearms. Outside of the law, they went on a gun grab of all the subversives, as well as the Jews. But not only is Salon ludicrously claiming that the Jews wouldn't have been able to fight back, even if they had firearms. They're also claiming that the communists and Stalin had no interest whatsoever in confiscating people's firearms in Russia. Well, isn't this interesting? This is a Russian propaganda poster from 1918, and it's been verified by Russian speakers. And the words read, as the picture depicts 
citizens turning in their handguns, sabres, rifles. The words read, citizens, turn in your weapons. So before Stalin even arrived on the scene, the citizens had turned in most of their weapons. The punishment for possessing firearms at around that time during the Civil War was either hard labour or three to six months in prison. Then Uncle Joe Stalin came along and the punishment was increased for possessing weapons to death, capital punishment. And then, of course, in the years after, he began his mass genocide, just as Hitler did, of tens of millions of disarmed victims. So, of course, Stalin took the weapons. He took gun control laws, just like Hitler did, that were already on the books, and made them more draconian, and punished his political adversaries who continued to possess firearms with death. So how, how you can argue that Hitler and Stalin were not for gun control when they enacted the very policies that disarmed their political adversaries, which led to them being butchered, is completely insane. Were gun rights increased for some citizens of Germany, some citizens of Russia? Yes, if they were Nazi members, or if they were communists, then yes, they were allowed to own guns. So the establishment's basically making that same very argument today. Only the government should have the monopoly on guns, the state, because that's how it was in Hitler's Germany, that's how it was in communist Russia. So they're making that exact same argument and then turning it around and making it appear as if Hitler was for gun rights when he was only for gun rights for friggin' Nazi party members. I mean, the mental gymnastics involved in this are completely asinine. And they're also arguing that non-Jews, non-subversives, just ordinary citizens under Hitler's rule were given increased access to firearms and increased gun rights. Well, let's listen to somebody who actually lived under Hitler's rule after Anschluss, when Austria was integrated into Germany under Nazi rule. Kitty Werthmann, she wasn't a Jew, she wasn't a subversive, yet listen to what she has to say about the Nazi policy on gun control. And we were deadly scared of the Gestapo because people disappeared all the time. We also had gun registration. Oh, the Austrian people had all, they all had guns. But the government said, the guns are very dangerous. Children are playing with guns. Hunting accidents happen. And we really have to have total control, safety. And we had criminals again. And the only way that we can trace the criminal was by the serial number of the gun. So we dutifully went to the police station and we registered our guns. Not long after, they said, no, it didn't help. The only way that we don't have accidents and crimes, you bring the guns to the police station and then we don't have any crimes anymore and any accidents. And if you don't do that, capital punishment. So that's what we did. <clears throat> so there you have it. Stalin and Hitler disarmed their political adversaries before engaging in mass genocide. Historical fact. Also historical fact, Stalin and those who went before him and Hitler increased already existing gun control legislation to a more draconian level, which ended up in ordinary civilians like Kitty Worthman under Nazi occupied rule, having to hand in and have their firearms confiscated. And no matter how many mental gymnastics or word games you try and pull on your readers, those leftist advocates of gun control are shameful. They're trying to rewrite history to push their contemporary political agenda, and it's disgusting. 
This is Paul Joseph Watson with InfoWars.com.